project. Okay, let's go with the last with the last layer. Uh, the mission layer creates plans composed of action to achieve a goal. Each action corresponds to a task in the task layer. A planner is the core of the planning system. A planner takes a domain of application and a concrete problem to create a plan. Here, the difference with the previous section is that now the sequence of action will be calculated at runtime instead, instead of in design time, and the system could adapt to changes in the environment. Let's illustrate the explanation with a simple sample in which our robot, R2D2, must carry the pieces to assemble a car. So uh, R2D2 should go to, to, any, to, to pick its piece and carry it to, to the assembly zone. And when you have one wheel, one steering wheel, and one body car in the assembly zone, you can assemble a car. OK? Uh, Google use PDDL. PDDL is planning definition domain language. Uh, it's very similar to Lisp. And it has a lot of a lot of time to specify the domain and the problem. The domain contains the declaration of the element that can be present in a concrete problem to solve. Here we define the type of instances that that we can find in a problem. In a problem, we can have robots, zones, pieces, and cars. Okay. Um, these are these are the valid predicate that can exist. Predicates are facts that are true if they exist in a determinate moment. When instantiated uh, predicates, the argument here, the robot and the sound. Okay. Uh, the argument are filled with the instance of the specified type. In our domain, we can apply three actions. Okay, this is sim simplified. We go here to the PDDL directory. You can see the complete PDDL file, the working file, but I have simplified for, for explanation. Okay. Yes, anyway, we have three actions. The action, the PDDL action are move, a transport, and assemble. With the action, we can solve all the problems we have. Um, okay. uh, each action has a set of parameters. These are the parameters. So the, when you apply move action, we have to specify which robot, the starting zone, and the goal zone. Okay. We have the condition. The condition is the robot has to be at the initial of the action to in order to be applied, that we can apply this action. The robot has to be in the starting zone. And the effects is the robot is not longer in the starting zone. So the predicate is removed from the knowledge base of the planning system. And the robot now, the result is the, no, the robot is in the goal zone. OK, that is the explanation of what is a move action here. OK. Let's go to a second. So let's try. Here. Uh, we will run the, the, we will use two terminals. In the first terminal, we will run the plancis 2 uh, the plancis 2 system. We will use this launcher. Launch here, in which we include the main launcher of the ROS2, the plan 2 and uh, we'll set the, the PDDL. So that is what we did here. To start this. And here in this in this terminal, uh, we will use a, a tool in Plasin2 called Terminal. This is a terminal in which you can use the, the tab to see the available commands. And you can, for example, get the domain. So you can see here the domain. You can see uh, 
the, the types, these four types. So uh, this is not in the terminal. This is here in these windows in the in the in the plus is two, but you can interact in any time with the uh, plus is two. Uh, you can see what are the model predicates. You can see a predicate, for example, uh, robot at. So you can you can here. Uh, work perfectly with this. Um, so we will populate the problem. The problem is the um, the concrete um, the concrete situation in which we want to um, in which we want to make the plans. So we can see the instances, a thing, and here are the predicates. Nothing. So let's populate this. You can directly copy and paste in the terminal here. You have this, so you can directly copy and paste. So in this way, we add several instances. We have we have here this instance is R2D2 is a robot. The wheel zone is a zone. Steering wheel zone, this is a zone, body car zone, everything, assembly zone. We have four zones. And we have three pieces. Wheel one, body car one, and a steering wheel. Okay, so you can see, get problem uh, predicates. Sorry. Oop. Oh, this happened that day. No problem. I don't know why. Let's start. Again, but again, populate again with the instances. And predicate. Okay, get problem. Predicate. Now, now it's working perfectly. Uh, we have these predicates. This at wheel one is the wheel zone, body car one is in the body car zone, the steering wheel one is the steering wheel zone. And the robot, the R2D2, is in the assembly zone. So everything is, is correct. And now let's plan. So let's establish a goal. This is the goal. We want that the piece that currently is in the wheel zone, we want that this wheel will be in the assembly zone. So this is the goal, and this is the plan. If you uh, type get plan, you get the plan, but you don't run it. Okay? So the plan is R2D2 has to move from the assembly zone to the wheel zone, and then transport, the R2D2 must transport the wheel one from the wheel zone to the assembly zone. Okay. Uh, okay. So we will. Uh, I will show you a, a more complex sample that involves navigation. So we will close the, here. Control D. Control D. You close this terminal and Control C. Control C. Control C. You stop everything. Okay. I will explain the next example. Mm. Okay. This is the application we will uh, we will see here. Um, this is the skill layer in which we have ROS2 navigation and the standard out to simulate the calls for to the skills. Uh, the control node libraries we will use are move. Approach object, open gripper, and close gripper. I'll show you before the approach object, open gripper, and close gripper control node. You saw that they were very simple. And here we will use another control node, this move. Move will call directly to the navigate to post action. So if we go here, I will show you the move. This is 
the control node, uh, the control node move. This is inspired in navigation to source code in which we inherit from the BT action node that is a uh, you are, you are um, specifying that this control node will call an action, and in this case, it will be this action, navigate to post. Okay. Uh, you have a, a input board, it's a goal, because in behavior tree, you have a block board. Uh, anyone can write in the black board, and you can read the from the black board using a, a, this identifier. And let's see the implementation. It's very, very simple. In the constructor, you establish what is the um, you set the the name of the action, and the first time you tick this control node, you uh, extract from the blackboard the the goal is a pose stamped, and you set the field pose of the of the action with this position. Okay, this will be um, this will be uh, this action. Is the action I show you at the initial of this of this talk, and this is the implementation of of this uh, of this control node. Okay, um, in in the plans, we will calculate the sequence the sequence of action to achieve a goal. Uh, that those action will be move, transport, and assemble. If you remember the dpddl here the move action the transport action on the assemble action um, these actions this action for, for every action we will have a we will have a node a ROS2 node and those action will load a behavior tree so the move action will load the move.xml, this is a behavior tree. This behavior tree contains only one, uh, one control node, this move, that we call to cross to navigation. The transport action will have the transport XML behavior tree that uses all the control nodes, and the output will be a standard output of or uh, navigation. And the assemble, is another behavior tree that uses this. Let's see here in the code. Uh, this is the this is the move behavior tree. This is redundant because we have only one uh, one control node in the sequence, so we could remove the sequence. Uh, this is the transport. In the transport, you open the gripper, approach to the object, close the gripper, move to the goal position. This is uh, how we specify uh, the entry in the in the blackboard and open the gripper when you are in the position. And this is assembled. It's only to simulate an assembly. Open gripper, approach object, and close gripper. Uh, here we have the implementation of the of this the move action. This is a uh, PDD lead action. This is this has to be implemented as an action, and it's here move action node. In move action, you call to the constructor with the behavior tree. It's move that XML. Uh, you have to to in the factory, you have a attribute member called factory. You have to register the node in the same way we did it in the first, uh, in the other layer. And here we have a structure to connect uh, the identifier of the zone with the geometry pose stamped. We start this here. We have the wheel zone that the coordinates are these. We have the steering wheel zone. These are the coordinates. We have the body car zone. These are the coordinates. So when uh, when this action is activated, this is the code to activate it. We extract from the argument of the of the action from the argument two the waypoint to navigate. So what is the connection? Why the argument two? Because if we go 
it will go to the PDDL. If we see move, the action move has these parameters. The zero is the robot, the one is the starting zone, and the, we are interested in this, the two, the yeah, parameter two, that is the goal zone. So we get the this, the argument, uh, this will be the position, the metric position, and we set the goal, the goal uh, in the blackboard here. We are setting, sorry, here in the move. In the move, we are setting this right now. So we set the goal pose, and everything start to to work. Okay. Um, so let's run it. Mm -hmm. So here we will follow the the commands. Is it here? Okay, here. This is. This is here. In a cell, you type this. I remove it. No, it's here. You see this, and the other, you will type this, and in another cell, the terminal. So here, the simulation. If everything goes well, and I can, okay, have the simulation. Here, mm -hmm. here, we have the RBs information. And yeah, um, this is more or less where the robot is, is the assembly zone. Uh, here on the left is the, is the body car zone. Here is the steering wheel zone, and this is the wheel zone. So the robot, you will see the robot moving to achieve the, the, to, to achieve the move, um, the move action, the move action. So here, yes, I know. And this is two with the example. And here, the terminal. The same way we, we did some time ago, we add some instances. We have uh, some predicate. Now we have more predicates because it's a complex example, and not much more. You can see uh, where the piece is, uh, that the piece is not used, something for, for the planning. And you establish, establish the goal. We want the car one being assembled. Okay, let's see what is the plan. It's very, complex plan because the robot has to go to the assemblies to the body car zone, transport the body car zone to the assembly zone, then go to the to the steering wheel zone, take the steering wheel to the to the assembly zone, and do the same with the wheel zone, and then assemble. So let's run. Let's see. So this is performing the first. The robot is moving. This song. Let's see the output. Navigation succeeded. 
and then let's see navigation succeeded mm -mm -mm. oh maybe it's bloke okay let me a moment to start this again not the simulator only only the part of the transition terminal and the transit to uh, system let's populate again this this worker in my house <laughs> Is going to work in this house too. Yes, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> and run. Uh, the robot is in the in the position, so the so the move will be very very short. Let's see. Move. So now is the transport. You open the gripper. Push up the close the gripper, and move again. Returning to the assembly zone. Let's see here. Now you can see it. So open the gripper and move to the next position. Move to the next position. So the robot is going to for the uh, steering wheel, I think. Yes, the steering wheel. Okay, while the robot is performing the suction, I would uh, like to, to say that um, in a real application, you will not use the, the terminal to, to do this. Um, you can use it for debugging, for monitorize, but you will you will program, uh, you will have a code like this, in which you init the knowledge, adding the instances, initial instances. Uh, you can modify the instances depending on your perception. You add the predicates using this Plansys2 API. You can set the goal this way in another point of your code. You can execute your plan. It's a synchronous call to, to execute in the code. And you can uh, get the feedback um, of the execution of the of the task. So you can integrate everything with it in the terminal you can do in your code. As a current, we are transporting. We are uh, we are here. No. We are here in the transport. Let's wait until the robot assembles the car. So, the gripper to finish transport. Now we will move to the to the last position. Move to the assembly zone for the wheels. The wheels are there. Right there. Mm. The robot lost for a while. Recovering. Thank you, Steven. It's recovering. Now you should set it. Open gripper. Close gripper. And we transport the wheel to the assembly zone. Maybe it has problem in this position. Some sun in the floor. Maybe I recover.
So the navigation succeeded. And the last, the last, uh, the last ember and successful finished. Okay. Um, so that's all for my side.